Hello, and welcome to part two of Nuclear Craft Overhauled. Last episode, we went over a little bit of how fuel cells work, along with uh, moderator blocks. Um, in this episode, I'd like to go over heat sinks, see if we can get this reactor to run without melting down a cell. So the first thing to know is the heat generation of your fuel. In this case, our fuel will generate 120 heat a tick, um, which you can see there in the yellow. Now, this heat is calculated per connection um, to each cell. So in this case, we have um, one connection per cell, which essentially just is 1x 120. So it's just one each each cell will be producing 120 heat a tick um, so that's the number we have to meet now we can do the, a couple different ways but the way that i've chosen to show is with these three heat sinks here um, i'll also do uh, a second um, uh, a couple maybe maybe i'll do a, more than one uh design just to show off a few different important points. So as you've seen in part one, each fuel cell will grab a, a fuel when it's running. So that means that each fuel cell needs to be cooled. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the rules for these three. Water needs to be next to a functional fuel cell, which just means that if it doesn't have fuel, this will turn off, which, um, well, should be pretty straightforward. So this is 50 heat, 55 heat of our 120. Now we're going to add an iron, which has to be next to one active moderator. Um, and an active moderator is the ones that are directly next to a fuel cell. This moderator is not active, which means that this heat sink, if placed here, will not actually work. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side, water next to a fuel cell, an iron next to a moderator. Now, these added together will be 105 heat, which is clearly not equal to our 120 required. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a gold sink between the two iron. And as you can see, it must be adjacent to two valid iron sinks. Um, so that's what we'll do. We'll place this here, and this will bring us above the 120. Um, this will equal, um, let's see. 110 each fuel cell is only receiving the cooling from these two active um, which is 105 so this configuration despite having technically enough cooling because this heat sink is not active it will melt down and uh let me just switch these ports really quick so that you can see when it melts down. All right, so what we've got here is a... You can actually see the heat rising in the um, fuel cells because these aren't getting enough heat. And it's, it's very slow because, oops, yeah, so you can see the uh, the heat rising there. I don't think I actually need that. The second port is just for automation purposes. You'll continue to see this heat rise. Um, and then once it, once it reaches the top, we will see it melt down. Now it's significantly slower because it does have coolers uh, or heat sinks, but eventually, boom, there we go. And we can see that, yep, it's, it's not connected. All right, so that is shown with not enough heat sinks as well as uh, the correct amount. So if they're connected by 
active like we saw this is this one is not active because it's not next to a uh, active moderator this will be two clusters because it's not connected and we should see this rising uh, 1320 1995 so you can see that even though this says um, it's not this isn't rising you can see the heat rising on these interior fuel cells so this will eventually melt out now let's swap this out with the proper configuration and we can see um, let's see 34 610 28. So there we go. Um, with enough cooling and without. And again, sometimes this doesn't quite show, but it, if this number is positive, it will eventually melt down. You can see the heat's almost entirely gone. Now, the closer you are to zero, the more effective your reactor is at producing steam, which is um, a topic for another video. But for now, what we've shown is how to keep your cells from melting down. One other thing to note about heat sinks is that if they're not connected to a cell, they don't actually cool anything. So in this case, we're just going to remove the two uh, lapis heat sinks, sorry, water heat sinks that were connected to the cells. And we'll see that once we add some fuel, um, Oops, that was unintended. We'll see that this heat level goes up quite high. Another fuel there. And that's because these clusters are not actually getting any um, cooling, which is why you see three clusters, because each cell is separate as well as the, the coolers. Um, and that's why you see that's why you see the um, the yeah the, the cluster um, the net cluster heating because we've got three clusters. Um, so it's very important, extremely important to make sure your um, heat sinks are connected to your fuel cells. There's a lot of heat sinks, and if you design your own reactor, you are going to want to go over these. They each have different rules in order to be active, um, and they should be relatively straightforward. You just kind of, you'll get a feel for it after a little while. Like, for example, these three here, obsidian, nether brick, and glowstone, these have a bit of a pattern going on. So obsidian has to be next to two valid glowstone. So that's be next to two active moderators. So like, for example, let's say we do a square here with fuel cells. Um, and then, so it's just a nice round area or square in this case. Um, these glowstone heat sinks next to two moderators. Uh, obsidian has to be next to two glowstones along a common axis. And the nether brick has to be next to obsidian. So you'll see that if you go through these, you'll eventually find um, patterns um, and, and um, kind of ways to, to guess. Like, like how I showed these ones, water or water, iron, gold. This is another pattern. These three go together like these three go together. Just with different reactor designs, you'll find different patterns occur naturally. Um, then there is strong single ones such as magnesium this is a pretty specific one but it has a higher cooling this is next to one active moderator exactly one active moderator and at least one reactor casing which means that it can only go here it has a higher cooling than these iron ones but um, if you use it you can't use this gold because this gold requires two iron so, so uh, it's a trade-off, which one you decide to use.
anyway, that is going to be it for heat sinks. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.